Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Esther here with another devotional. I am so glad that you are here with me this morning. So now let's go together into God's word and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And before we do that, we are going to prepare our hearts by just opening up in prayer. Father, I just thank you for today. Thank you for your goodness and your love. Thank you, Lord, for how you have been keeping us. Father, I pray that you would just speak to us this morning. You would speak to our hearts. You would give us your truth and your word for this moment and season of our lives to encourage us, to strengthen our resolve and faith. And again, just to reveal yourself, the wonder and the awe of all that you are. I thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, this month we are in Christmas season. Excuse me. And last week I talked about, you know, a little bit of the story of Jesus being born. And we focused on Elizabeth and Zachariah. And we saw that Elizabeth and Zachariah's story is a story of hope. Um, so during this time of year, through Jesus coming into the earth, we can be hopeful. We can be hopeful that we can rely on God's word. We can be hopeful to know that God will bring his promises to pass. We can be hopeful to know that we serve a God who can do great and mighty things. We serve a God who can do the impossible. So hope should be springing forth in our hearts as we are going through our daily lives to put our hope in, in God, to put our trust in God. Now today, I want us to see another aspect of the Christmas story. But before we go to the Gospels, we're going to go to an Old Testament book. And if you would, join me in opening to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And this is what it says. It says, there is an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to avoid embracing. A time to search and a time to count as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. So the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes that there is, in verse 1, there's an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven. And none, this scripture speaks true as we think about the Christmas story. So think about, for me, what amazes me is just how everything had to come together at the right time. And God is the orchestrator of time, and he does it so well. So when we think about uh, there's a time and a season for everything under heaven, and we think about the Christmas story, there was a right season for Elizabeth and Zachariah to become pregnant. There was a right season for Mary to be born and to grow up in so that she could come to her moment of destiny. There was a right time for Joseph to, um, <coughs> excuse me, come into his trade and, and become a man and, and it was a time for him to get married. Um, there was a perfect time in the season that Jesus had to be born, that Jesus had to come into the earth so that prophecy would be fulfilled. And who orchestrated all this time, who put it all together? God. You know, I think about it and I think about, wow, you know, Jesus had to be in Bethlehem to be born because that's what prophecy says. But Joseph and Mary were from Nazareth. So to me, it's like at the moment of conception, it had to be exactly nine months away from when Joseph and Mary needed to be in Bethlehem so that they can um, 
be a part of the census that Caesar at the time had called. So that means that Joseph and Mary had to be betrothed in a time that there would be a king who would come and say, hey, in a couple of months, there's going to be a Caesar census, excuse me, and everyone has to go back home. It also means that Elizabeth and Zacharias, God had to close up her womb and leave it for long periods of time on so that when Mary would be conceived, Elizabeth would have been six months pregnant, enough time for the baby in the womb to be filled by the Holy Spirit to say, the Messiah isn't Mary. And, you know, it's just so amazing to see how God put every single aspect of Jesus coming into the earth in the right time and in the right season. Because God is the orchestrator of time. And so when we look at the story, the Christmas story, it gives us an assurance that if God did that with Jesus, then God is doing that with us. So maybe right now you are going through a moment, you are going through a season, and maybe it doesn't feel like the timing is right. Or maybe you feel like you've been in this time and in this season for too long. Or maybe you're in something right now that you want to be over. And I know for us in 2020, that's definitely the quarantine. That's definitely this pandemic. Like I for one, can say that yes i want it to be over but god is the orchestrator of the timing and i want us to ask ourselves a question do we trust god's timing do we trust his wisdom to know when it is a time to bring something to end when it's the time to begin something when it's the time to stay in something, when it's the time to be delivered from something, when it's the time to still go through something, do we trust God? Because I know that from looking at the story of Jesus's birth, God's timing is perfect. Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem at the right time. Mary and Joseph were betrothed at the right time. Joseph got the message from the angel to not do away with Mary at the right time. Mary and Elizabeth were pregnant at the right time. So God's timing is, pre is perfect. So as we enter into the last couple of days of this year, and I know that we're all going to start reflecting on 2020. And maybe for some of us, it just seemed like the timing of everything that God was doing in this year, it just seemed off. I wanna just encourage you to remember the words in Ecclesiastics chapter three, verse one. There is an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven. Even though we may not see the wisdom of this time or we may not see how it's gonna play out, we can use the story of Christmas, of Jesus's birth to remind us that God's timing, it's always perfect. We can rest assured knowing that if we put our hope and our trust in him and in the season that he has us in, we are going to see his wisdom and what he was doing in time. And all pun intended, because now we can sit down and look at the story of Jesus's birth and think, wow, Look at what God was doing. But I bet for a pregnant Mary and the soon-to-be Father Joseph, that sentence was pretty inconvenient. Like, what? Mary's like nine, almost ten months pregnant, and we have to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem because of the census? Man, that is so inconvenient. Or Elizabeth and Zacharias, like, God, but now we're old? Now it's happening? Why couldn't it happen when we were younger and we had more energy? But the greater glory was that the timing was right for them to be a part of scripture being fulfilled. The timing was perfect so that God's word would surely come to pass. So be encouraged everyone as we end the year to know that God's timing is perfect. And wherever you are, trust 
that God knows that this is the season that you need to be in. And maybe right now you can't see all the good of it. But because we serve a God who is great and does good things, we serve a God in whom we can put our hope in. We know that this season has purpose. This season has meaning. Even in this season and in this timing, God is doing something. So I want to encourage you to wait on the Lord and allow every season to pass through your life, knowing that God is at work. God bless you. Thank you.